Hi everyone and welcome to the latest Monaco webinar and um, joining us live from Monaco HQ here in Santon Johannesburg and thanks for joining in this afternoon and a very welcome to you all and uh, we've hosted a number of webinars and um, in the last couple of years and this one is focusing in on the professional designations the qualifications and how it can set you up for success in your career and obviously anyone joining who doesn't know what Monaco does we're a management consultancy firm focusing in on financial services and uh, the heart of banking and the panel that we have tonight for you is going to I suppose give their insights to their professional qualifications how it set them up for success in their career and also to give you some insights into how to study how to plan how to prep and how to nail that final exam and so I'll hand you over to the panel in a couple of seconds they'll introduce themselves and we've got a very special guest tonight as well Russell who's joining us from one of the, the, the most sought after boot camp companies and you know <laughs> prep um, companies that gets you set up for success uh, in South Africa. So we yeah, are pleasure to have you all join Thank us you. tonight panel. Um, and let's focus and start there. Let's uh, hand it over to the panel to introduce themselves. Very welcome all and starting with you, Karuna. Sure, <laughs> thanks Patrick. Um, evening everyone, um, Karuna, um, a senior manager of Monaco and I'll be speaking about the SEMA designation this evening. Good evening, everyone. My name is Phoebe Fiyila Maziba. I'm a CASA, um, ACMA, CGMA. <laughs> so many letters after <laughs> my name. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and I'm going to be focusing on the CASA. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Irma Berger. I'm a senior manager here at Monocle Solutions. I am both a CFA and a FRM charter, but I will be speaking to you tonight about CFA. Hi everyone, I'm Guy Wilding. I'm the research lead at Monaco, um, and I'm only an FRM, so I'll be talking to you about FRM tonight. Hi, I'm Russell. Um, I head up a, a company called Edge Designations, uh, where we offer prep for CFA, FRM, Kaya, and now FTP. Uh, the focus tonight will be on uh, CFA and FRM. Great. Thanks, Russell. Thanks for joining us. Special guest in Monocle Head HQ, as we say here. And um, other panel have joined Monocle and have obviously been part of the Monocle um, career uh, journey of the last number of years. Um, some have started their journey on a graduate program and progressed into very senior positions within Monocle. So congratulations on the success. Um, and really, let's start with focusing in on the qualification, you know, and um, tell us maybe the pros and cons of each one of them that you found, panel. Um, sure. So it's quite a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, I think one, some of the pros of the SEMA designation is it's, it's internationally recognized um, and it's accredited in the UK. So it does give you that global recognition, um, which is really nice. And it gives you a strategic way of, of looking at um, a business or a problem. You're just coming in at a very different level. I suppose one of the cons is that you're you're getting, um, I don't want to say pigeonholing, but you're, you're you're focusing on on financials. You're focusing on accounting, and and that becomes a, a major focus for you. So you um, kind of concentrate your efforts in that space. Um, that's what I would say. Right, Phoebe. Um, from a CASA, I think you are part of the psych. You're a psycho member when you become a chartered accountant in South Africa, which is a South African Institute of Chartered Accountants. Um, it's a very prestigious title. Um, so you're not just an accountant and with that comes a whole host of opportunities, the training that you receive. Um, so in order to qualify to become a CA, you, you, you need to do three years of articles um, and the training that you receive in that time is, is world class, also internationally recognized. Um, there are many, many pros. <laughs> uh, it's just, yeah, you, you, the CA designation really does set you apart. But the con, I guess, more to Karuna's point as well, is sometimes you think because you're a CA, you have it all, and you expect the title to, to sort of direct your career for you, where it's actually still in your hands. You mm -hmm. still need to know what you want and, and how you want to progress. Yeah, so that's the, you can really just think, 
I'm a CA. I've made it. And <laughs> that's 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 actually it's just the start. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. yeah, so I mean CFA or chartered chartered financial analyst <laughs> program, it's you know, it's probably one of the most well recognized global and yeah, um, respected really charters in the industry, specifically in the financial markets kind of industry. Um, but that comes with kind of a double-edged sword because you're looking at the one of the oldest kind of big dog designations in the industry. So a lot of people want to do it because it's seen as this sexy designation. Um, and if you ask them why they want to do it, they don't necessarily have an answer for you. It's really just for the name recognition. And while that is a major pro to the designation, I think it's really important to take a step back and really evaluate your own career and understand why am I doing this? Where am I going? So, I mean, I'll let Guy really speak to FRM, but for me, something that really struck a chord with me is the different perspectives that we take because we all play in the same financial market, right? Um, so if I am from a CFA perspective, really looking more from the investment side of things, you are going to take the point of view of I'm standing outside a company, I'm a possible investor, I want to evaluate the opportunities and the risks that that company has. While if I'm putting on the FRM lens, I'm putting myself in the company, how am I managing those risks? And uh, that's two different approaches to the same financial markets that we operate in. So I think it's quite important that each one of us, when you start considering these designations, take a step back, look at where do I want to go? Because it can be a pro or a con for you, depending on if it's the right fit for you or not. Um, but just a couple other quick pros is obviously the name recognition, which we said, mm -hmm. the career advancement. Um, but for me, really, if I think about now that I'm on the other side, what any of these designations really mean is it's the characteristics that it proves. If you've got this designation, I know you can put your head down and work. I know that you've got the grit that it takes. Um, and I think that there is respect in the industry for that because people understand what it takes to get it. So, yeah. Hi. <laughs> if yeah. yeah, I mean, FRM is Financial Risk Manager. So as the name suggests, it's it's got a heavy emphasis in risk. Um, so if you're in financial services or that's where you want to play, it's, it's definitely a qualification or a certification that's worth looking at. Um, but it does have a very strong focus towards banking. So I think that's always a good consideration. And I wouldn't say it's necessarily a, a con in that sense, but it is a limitation of it in that you should be clear when you from the office <laughs> that it's dealing in the variety of risks that you'll see mainly in banking. Um, and that is, I think, it's a limitation, but it's also its strong point in that if that's a career path that, that you've chosen or that you like to choose uh, in banking, um, then it gives you a great uh, start um, because I think there is always, it, it, while it's quite broad, it's not going to give you maybe the depth you would want to get to to work in um, sort of in, in all those positions in, in terms of a risk perspective. So there's a great part that it gives you a variety of uh, insights into to risk across the risk types. I think the part or the second part is um, what I found to be the most beneficial. So you go through all the risk types, liquidity, credit, markets, operational, and then a few emerging ones. Um, and so I think by the end of it, it gives you a really solid foundation that if you're going to go into a bank, you can almost speak to anybody. You can speak their language um, with any team and any function. Uh, but again, uh, I think and it's the same with most uh, or CFA I know as well. So you've got to go that little bit deeper because there's not it's not going to make you an expert in risk management or as a financial advisor you or financial analyst. You're going to need to go um, and just go further around learning those technical skills in coding uh, or whatever it might be. But there's always that extra step. But I think it sets you up nicely for a career in banking. And, and I think that's every we're speaking tonight is obviously qualifications that are, you know, focus around financial services and there's so many designations, so many letters behind different names. And, you know, for anyone listening, Russell, coming to you, like out there, how do you choose the right qualification that is fitted into your own career path? You know, which is right. You must get asked that question quite a lot. 
every day. <laughs> <laughs> I just had one driving here. Okay. Um, a candidate, not sure whether they should be doing an old FRM candidate, by the way, um, who now wants to switch to CFA. And I said, well, wh why do you want to do that? Well, FRM is getting hard. <laughs> I said, they're all hard. Yeah. You know, and often I get that. that uh, I even got one the other day, which is the quickest one to do. I said, that's not the, that's not the question. <laughs> and I think to your point, um, the, the designation that you do should match what you're trying to achieve a little bit longer term. Um, because, you know, you, you talk, if we go around the table, you know, start off with SEMA, very strategic, very management accounting based, very, if that's your area. CISA got more of an accounting look, okay. Um, CFA, finance, investment related, and FRM is risk. So depending on what you're looking at, and I think people have got to get that right up front. Don't jump into a designation um, unless you really know, you kind of like have to work a bit backwards, know what you want, okay, what you want to achieve, banking, insurance, that kind of stuff, risk is very good, compliance, investments in that, you're looking more CFA. So it depends where your, what your end game is in a sense. Um, you know, I even had uh, many years back, we had a, um, a guy joined the class and he looked quite confused uh, to one of my CFA classes. Um, they, they often look confused, but, you know, he looked a bit more confused than, than, than normal. And um, I came to him after the first class. He came to me and he said, you spoke a lot about ethics and stuff. And when am I going to teach them to how to invest? So I said, who told you this was an investment class? He said, this is a CFA. So I said, it is. I said, what do you do? He's a surgeon. <laughs> so I said, well, what on earth is a surgeon doing in a CFA class? He says, I'm going to be disrespectful, but I've got a lot of money. So I said, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure you do. <laughs> what, do you want to, so what are you here for? He said, he wants to learn how to invest. So I said, my suggestion to you is you go on your way out of the class, go past the office, get a full refund because you've only attended one class and register for a six-week JSC course on how to invest because this is the wrong course for you. CFA is not going to teach you how to invest. CFA is going to give you a, a much, much, as exactly what, what uh, Irma said, it's a broad look at investments, yeah. economics, investments, quants, but nothing, I'm not going to teach you how to invest. You know, that is often things that are a little bit more specific. We we'll learn how to code, go to a Python course. I mean, we're not going to teach you those in the, but also what Irma said, it's, it's a three-year designation. You're going, you're going to work. You know, I said, you know, if you're busy operating on people, not the right place for you. And we sent him on his way and hopefully he's made more money on the investing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's a very relevant point there. You know, I suppose timing is everything. You know, you mentioned they're, they're all hard. It's, it's like I always use the cooking thing. If you know, if you sign up to do comrades and comrades in an 88k run. No one at 50k is going to tell you, oh, this is great. I'm loving this and this is what I've signed <laughs> up for. But when they finish that finish line, that's the the goal that's the reward after the three years of getting your certification here the names uh, you know the letters behind the name but i suppose out there how do you know is the right, when's the right time to sign up for these qualifications you know there's no right or wrong time mm. um, and each person's got their journey um you know so it's, it's really about you know a, a lot of people for example if we talk about cfa a lot of people cannot get into an investment firm a wealth management firm an asset manager until they've started. So yeah. albeit that might not be the, the best motivation to be doing it because it's, you know, it's more externally driven, yeah. you know, but, and even CFA now, there's, there's moves now in the 2024, um, it's even started now, but one, one of the big changes is called partial designation for CFA, mm -hmm. that they're going to recognize that you are, have passed CFA level one. And in, in the past, you either had the, the full charter or you, were very, you know, um, persona non grata. Now you have to get the you could every level, and they've realised that that's that's what the industry is out there looking for. That it, it was a little bit of Irma said is that once you've got CFA level one, okay, you're serious. Yeah. Now we want you in our firm. Got CFA level two, okay, maybe you're a bit more serious. I don't know levels of serious, but and that's often why a lot of people do it. Yeah. So is there a, sp a, a perfect time, you know? But having said that, a lot of guys do it once they've got some kind of a degree or something behind them. So yeah. typically speaking, it's much easier once you've got your degree in investments, in finance, in risk, in quants, whatever it happens to be, then to hop into a designation to supercharge your your career yeah. 
Um, and it's a lot easier then because you've you've got some behind you. If you take a guy wants to start off doing a CFA uh, or an FRM or any of those without a background, it's, it's harder. Yeah, mm -hmm. doable but harder. Russell, we were just having a discussion before the webinar, and we were saying you also need to be ready. Mm -hmm. Depending on where you are, you need to be ready to to study and to start. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that way, you you can be a mom, a dad, or but you will mm -hmm. because you're focused and you 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 really want it and you're ready for it at that time. Yeah. But that internal drive is so yeah. important because you also have to realize life will happen. Mm -hmm. Some of us will become dads. <laughs> Others <laughs> will. You know, COVID can happen, whatever. Life yeah. will happen. It's a long journey. CFA for a lot of people are three plus years. You know, a lot happens in that time. So you have to really want it yeah. and realize what it's going to take to get there. You know, just to, to talk, we, we had one guy also came into our offices once and he says he's not sure what he wants to do. He thinks he's going to try CFA. So I said, not on my course, you know. <laughs> and he said, what do you mean? You won't accept me? I said, no. He said, but it's... So, so revenue for you, I said, it doesn't make any interest. I'm not driven by the money. We need to live, of course. But I said, you don't come and try CFA, CA. If we, you've got to, exactly what Phoebe says. There's a strong commitment. You've got to know you want to get it. You're ready for it. You, 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 and I always say you talk to your family first. <laughs> Tell them this. Because it, it really is. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a big commitment. I mean, mm -hmm. they talk 300 hours for CFA. It's nonsense. It's, it's way above that uh, per level. Now you now you take someone that's already busy. None of us, no, no one's sitting around waiting. Well, what should I do tomorrow? Well, people are busy, lives, work, and now you say, well, now you got to get another three hundred hours in at least in five months. Where? Yeah. You got to be committed. You got to want it. You got to be committed. It's not something you're going to come and say, I'll try this, because if you just come in to try, it's not going to work. Yeah, so. hundred percent. And 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 people who are tuning in and listening to this are probably saying, "Oh, then I'm not, I'm not going to go and study this. All the the commitment that everyone here is putting me up." But I think you need to look at the the value benefit of yeah. doing it. You know, and the reason why people want it to have a professional designation on your CV can really move and advance your career forward. And we've seen it with many people who've joined Monocle, um, and people looking to to get into Monocle. You know, part of uh, our application process in terms of people and culture perspective is looking at many CVs and what stands out. And, you know, if we have a candidate who has completed a CFA or FRM, it's very relevant to the Monaco world, or it shows that they've put that time in the commitment um, and they've got a certain level of, you know, brain power, but obviously, you know, control in terms of making sure that they can make it through the successful designation, you know, and that, that sets you up for career. It opens the doors and you get in. You know, whereas people who don't have those are the CVs, you know, the little things that make you stand out in the kind of the, the, the candidate market, you know. To that point, Phoebe, you'll, you'll appreciate this, I hope. Um, after I finished my articles, I joined a, 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 a black empowerment private equity firm called Cajisa. Oh, no. And I went for an interview and I got accepted. At that point, I was a CA, and I know it's not, it's not a CFA, but those are the two designations that I did have at that point, 1999. And I got the job, and you know, six months later, I was sitting with a C, CFO, a guy, Johnson and Jackie, and uh, we had a cup of coffee together. He says, do you know why we hired you? This is interesting. I said, well, I said, JJ, I thought I was the only one. So he said, no, no, you weren't. He said, this was you. And about 50 people applying for the job. So I said, Oh, wow. He said, Let me tell you something. Of the 50 people, 49 were CAs, and you were a CA with a CFA. He said, That's true. Interesting. So it, it was just literally, I was no better or more qualified really than the others. Okay. Um, but the extra three little letters, and this is, should give motivation to people because I can tell you recruiters and that they were looking at that. Yeah, so sure. it's, and it was an easy, I said, Well, he said that was that was your standout. I thought, and I was I said, nothing else. Just the, <laughs> <laughs> it was just that. So <laughs> open those doors. Yeah. So it just that is a big motivator. Yeah, and and obviously completing the the, the the designation and having that it gives you the confidence to to move forward. So maybe go to the panel and and, and everyone. Let's just talk about how it's helped you in terms of your career and and the work and giving you that confidence to move forward. Sure. Um... It's a great question because you have to apply what you've learned after all these years. Um, I think 
given the work that we do in change management, uh, SEMA has been great for giving us perspective and models on how to work with people and how to make change less scary and less daunting. And, and um, I think also more recently, I've also appreciated how uh, SEMA can assist when we have clients that are bringing something new to market, like a new product or, or launching um, a new division or new business unit. And um, because SEMA trains you to step into any sector and become a, a guided advisor to, to um, influence the business, you know what drives um, mm. these businesses or these projects. And you kind of view a project as a as a business. I think mm -hmm. Phoebe and I were talking about this earlier. And then you sort of come in with, with insights and, and how would I work from the top down here? And it sounds very soft, but it's been really helpful <laughs> in making changes and making waves and becoming that sort of trusted advisor in the team. Excellent. That's how it's helped me, yeah. I think just to pick up from what Karuna is saying, um, because as a CA, um, certain levels I didn't have to do uh, for my SEMA qualifications, which is the ACMA. Yeah. And really, the CA is so good from a all round and that the audit gives you the risk aspect. The accounting is your IFRS and, you know, the, the accounting, you have the tax. Um, but the SEMA gives that strategic level. And as I moved up to being senior manager, senior executive within the Monaco spaces, mm -hmm. that strategic level it was really um, important and it really helped me. And I actually did my SEMA qualification by Monaco because we are a SEMA partner. Yeah. Um, and um, like I said, the training, whether you get it at a bank, at the big four firms, but I did my articles at Deloitte. So um, we had very big clients and that already you get to deal with stakeholders. And that's what we do in management consulting. So the, the designation and the profession really sets you up to become successful within a management consultant space and to then grow your career because then um, can handle tough conversations, tough mm. situation. You are agile. You can mm. move from project to project. I mean, if you're doing tax today, tomorrow you're writing, and some days you're writing <laughs> <laughs> management accounting and audit. And, you know, so it, it it really does really set you up and help you in your career. Yeah. Yeah, so I think from my side, it's... So I come from an academic investments background and I absolutely have always had this passion and love for financial markets and products. Um, and kind of the obvious next step then is to do your CFA. But I also knew that the cutthroat world that being a trader is, or is could be, wasn't necessarily the path for me. So I almost end up with, when I think about that question, Patrick, in a little bit of a, what came first, chicken or the egg argument, because the designations really guided me to show me what I like to do, but they also opened the doors so I could start doing it to apply it more. So it kind of went hand in hand. Um, and I think, you know, the combination of having CFA and FRM for me in my space, so these days I specialize in market risk and uh, it's really quite a unique perspective that I can take because while I'm in the risk space, I can put on my frame hat and I can take that perspective, but then I have to go speak to the trader. So now I can take, put on my CFA hat. I can speak their language. I understand the products. I understand where the different guys are coming from. And it's really, like you said, Karina, you have to go apply it. Mm -hmm. They give you the tools and you have to go make something off of it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's hundred percent open doors for me. Patrick, eat chicken or the egg, we can have a long debate about it. But um, yeah, it's it's hand in hand been opening great doors for me. Yeah, I mean, I think if we look at the risk space, risk is always changing. It's always um, moving and concentrating in different areas. So if we look at 10 years ago, that was definitely market risk with the different products. And if we look now, there's almost a shift to liquidity risk, insolvency. So I think the, the FRM gives you that broad understanding of, 
of risk types across the board. So if you're in consulting, um, like we are at Monaco, um, you could be on various different projects across your career and you want to have that expertise to, to know and to identify various issues um, and to assist clients in various different functions. So that's helped me. So being in research as well, speaking to various people about um, their projects, it's never the same problem. It's never the same risk. It's There's always a new solution. Um, and I think as long as we have banking, there will always be risks and they will always change. So FRM sets you up very nicely to, to be on top of that. So mm -hmm. I think, and especially in a consulting role, uh, it's mm -hmm. definitely adds a lot of value. Look, and that's the reason why you guys have, have done these, you know, to, to assist you in terms of work wise. So obviously from a, a company perspective, like Monocle, it's the reason why we invest so much in our people, and, you know, making sure that our product is our people and we have the best people, not just on paper, who have the qualifications, who've got the, the technical training, but also got the knowledge in terms of knowing what they're doing, you know. I've been able to go in and have that confidence behind me to say, yes, I, I, I got this and, you know, and I think maybe just to touch on that point, you know, we obviously support from financial aspect in terms of the study support program at Monocle, you know, study leave and things like that. And the new profession designations club that set up, maybe we just discuss that. How does that go about assisting people at Monocle? You throwing that one at yeah, me? Yeah, let's go. I'm looking at you, Irma. <laughs> so, yeah, so maybe as an introduction, um, we've recently-ish, probably about a year old now, Think we need a birthday party uh we have <laughs> created the monocle designations club yeah. so it's really around creating a community of people who understand what you're going through and to uh, share resources to just yeah really support one another i feel like when you go through this it's going to be a very lonely journey quite easily um and i'm not going to say you must form a study group because for some people that works, for others it doesn't. But it's really, we want people to have like-minded people around them who understand what they're going through, who have easy access to us as charters in the company. We hear we have advice, um, things like CFA that you need other charters to sign you off to actually get your charter. We've got those structures set up. So it's really just a support structure at the end of the day. Um, and the rest of the support that Bonacle provides, I mean, listen, these are expensive designations. It takes a lot of time. You need study leave. You need all of these things. So having a company that offers that for you, it makes all the difference in the world. Um, I don't think if I was in a space where a company just said, enjoy, <laughs> not our problem, it, I would have necessarily gone for it. It would have been really tough. Yeah, it all comes down to investment in, in, in our people, like you said, you know, and yeah, it, it kind of outweighs it. And it, having completed that and then getting the gratitude and the congratulations yeah. from everyone, you know, it's something that you want to be proud of as well. Yeah, but, we've got our annual charter holders dinner. It's lovely. Yeah, it's to celebrate now. all our newbies. We've got to celebrate the successes. You know Excuses to drink champagne. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to add that we are not a um, CASA training office. But um, we are a SEMA partner, so it is easy to get, or Monocle does support, that's the right wording, support you to get your ACMA, CGMA, and, you know, like Russell said, yeah. it, that's those are the things that then set you apart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we have many people who join our CA training program that happens in January of each year. And yeah. I think you were probably our first CA who joined and became a CA SEMA. SEMA, so yeah. Was the, you came <laughs> the way to <laughs> set this up, so well and, and like I said, like with the agility and the training you get, the, uh, we have two of the best trainers um, in the country, as we say. So from a technical aspect and differentiating yourself as a CA, um, the, the, tra the training from that aspect to get our technical skills up as CAs, um, from Monocle is, is phenomenal. That sets yeah. you up for success. Um, just something I want to touch upon, you we all kind of mentioned about the prep world, you know, and I think that's the, the biggest thing and, you know, partly the reason for kind of this uh, webinar tonight is to announce the, the Monocle boot camps and how we're going to be initiating those uh, very cool initiatives um, for Monocle employees and people in the financial services industry who want to be part of the boot camp who can join. There's more information 
at the end of the webinar, you just basically click on the QR code and that will bring you into a place where you can register and get more information. So don't be afraid to, to kind of link in and, and check that out. But maybe, Russell, coming to you, the most valuable question or advice people want is how do you prepare yourself? And I suppose that's a very open-ended question. There's a lot of things you can do, but if you can maybe focus in on the key priorities of preparation. Okay, sure. So, you know, the, the preparation, I think, and, and I always, whenever I had my introductory class, when we had live classes, was to really be prepared for this. Yeah. You know, and when I say be prepared for it, um, there's that commitment level, okay? Um, and that involves yourself, your family, your unit. You know, often you find after five months of study for CFA or whatever, your friends, so who are you again? <laughs> we haven't seen you for a while, okay? And you need to prepare your circle for that. Your wife, your husband, your whoever, cat, your dog, whoever it happens to be that's, you know, your, your person or your people, that it's going to be a, a, a you know, and, and, and yourself as well to be prepared for that. It's, 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 it's a hell of a commitment. You know, this is not, obviously not to discourage people from doing it, but it's to, to, to you know, to prepare them properly for, um, you know, for the process. You know, typically speaking, if we look at the designations, uh, I'm talking more CFA and, and FRM now. Um, CFA, there's three levels. FRM, there's two. They call them two parts. Generally, it takes five to six months worth of preparation um, uh, to, to get yourself ready. CFA, they talk 300 hours, no less for FRM in terms of the preparation. Um, and when we at EDGE, um, we always used to teach the guys the four C's. Um, the first one was, was the first C was the commitment that you really needed to be committed to this. The second C was the consistency. Okay. And that's what we call everyday work, you know, um, and it's literally, it's every single day. It's almost a bit like, is that like work days as well? You know, you know, we work. So I know you work, but what it's going to involve in, in terms of the consistency is everyday work. And it can be five minutes, it can be 10 minutes, it can be listening to a, a lecture of sorts on the way. Or, but that consistency, if you miss a day, you miss two days, you miss three days, and comes a weekend and now you're tired. Well, start again next weekend. The problem with these designations is that there's a bit of a snowball effect. And if you miss one, you miss two, and and then you're a month out from the exam. And then you think, hmm, okay, is this, can I still write it? <laughs> okay, so it's really it's the, it's, it's the, the, the consistency of, of the process. Start early. Start to, you know, once you've decided that this is what you want to do, start early. Um, Irma likes to work in groups. Okay, I was less of a group type person. Um, so, but you can form yourself a study group that, that often help a lot of people work well within study groups. Um, but the, the, the start early, get yourself your material early, start working early, work consistently through the process. Um, you know, uh, I'm not yet to advertise Edge, but of course we've got all those products to help you to get that done. The, the, the thing that we're looking at here, specific, specifically in, in our association uh, with Monocle, um, is what we call the, the boot camps. The boot camps, typically, we're going to run about five to six weeks out from the exam date. And uh, what the boot camp does is it revises the entire syllabus for you. You know, for example, CFA, FRM. Um, and it will take you a weekend, uh, depending on your employer. You'd have to ask them for the Friday off. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, hopefully no one's working Saturday, Sunday, that you need to get permission to, to, to take some leave. But in those three days, we'll revise the entire syllabus for that particular level for you, okay? Um, who's it for? Who's it not for? Um, I always tell people the boot camps, we used to call them uh, the revision programs, boot camps, it's all the same thing. It's a three-day intensive revision. It's not what we call the silver bullet. It's not going to get you through this exam. So please, guys, and it's just a, it's an important thing when I talk about the consistency of the work process, don't say, oh, whew, the boot camp's coming. I'm going to be <laughs> fine. No. Mm -hmm. The boot camp is the, is, is the final stage to, for those people, I always, I always say there's two kinds of people that I always see two faces in the boot camps, the smilers and the guys that are just like, oh, my word. And the <laughs> second group of the guys that realized, when I was talking and going through what still what was in the syllabus, and they say, "Well, I don't, I don't have a clue what you're talking about," but I do realise I've got enough in, to know that I'm in trouble. And the, for you, for those guys, the boot camp's too late. Yeah. 
And it's, it's almost, you know, not worth your while to, if, if you're not ready for the boot camp and you haven't gone through the syllabus before and a word consistency through the process till that point in time, it's, 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 it's of little value to you. Mm -hmm. The values to the guys that have done the material, they're coming, they're getting a revision of everything. I remember that, I remember that. Yeah, that's a good point. And maybe you'll pick up a few points where you're a bit weaker and you've still got a bit of time five weeks out from the exam school to prepare for that. Um, that's the benefit of it. Yeah. You know, very important. I just, you know, um, I, I'm always, for, for the second group of guys that are, get that, that pale look on their face and that scared look, um, my suggestion always is, and I've always thought about doing this, and maybe at some point we will, is to run the revision program at the beginning of the five months to give the guys a sense of what's in the program, you know, and give them, you know, because if you scare them up front a little bit, it might not <laughs> 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 um, So, yeah, so that's the boot camp that we're talking yeah. about. Um, in addition to that, of course, we're going to be running an exam session as well, which will, after the the boot camp run a session of exams for the guys to get them exam ready and not just exam ready in terms of the material, but in terms of the process as well, what you can expect on exam day, um, et cetera. Because often that takes a little bit of a fear out of the process. Um, first time writers, you know, um, I'm not going to blame Saka here, of course, because we don't, uh, but there, there was a, the December writing, either this one or the one before <coughs> that where all the computers had failed. And it can send us candidate off the edge because yeah. that's not you. You were there to write for your certain amount of time, and you. But the, the final C that we've got in our in our in our group of four Cs is calm. Just it's just soccer. It's just CFA. It's just FRM. It's you know, and just to put into a little bit of a perspective for for candidates, sometimes just take a breath. If it's getting too much for you, take a breath. We'll come back tomorrow. So um, we try to try keep our candidates as calm as possible. It, it, it helps a lot. It's you know, that, that, so that exam process is gets candidates a little bit ready for the exam. See what is what it's about. If you've written one time before, you know what it's about. It's going to be the same process on the coming exam day. And uh, in addition, of course, it'll test where you are in terms of your of your knowledge. And um, yeah, there's a lot, a lot in that. Um, yes. But I think you know, in terms of yeah, even preparing for the exams, the exams are like a, a marathon in its way. You, you can't just go into a five-hour exam without having you know, conditions yourself to do those things in your mind or your body. And, you know, I think a lot of people would, would ask, you know, the key things about what I'm picking up what you're saying there is discipline, you know, having time set aside, like a study timetable um, and making sure you're prioritizing your time. I'm amazed by the amount of people I'd speak to maybe on a Friday and I'd say to them, you know, at Monica, I'll say like, any plans for the weekend? And like, yeah, I'm studying all weekend. And I'm like, oh, my word, what is it? You know, and, and, yeah, but and then I have to say, that's what I admire. Like, that's the discipline that's required. That you have to say, look, I'm going to sacrifice some time here, but this is my end goal, you know? I suppose if there was one tip that you could provide, you know, around study, you know, at prep, what would it be, Pamela? Um, exam <laughs> technique, which touches on, on what uh, Russell mentioned earlier, is going through mock exams, feeling the interface, um, timing yourself in the mm -hmm. format yeah. of the exam. That's the best way. It'll just calm those nerves. I've actually got a different tip, but I want to add on to that. The calm. Exam day strategy is everything. I can tell you guys a horror story about my CFA free exam, but um, maybe not. <laughs> um, but in short, um, so we were postponed twice due to COVID. So you've been studying basically a year and a half at this point, on and off too, but relatively disciplined, Patrick. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, get to the exam day. We were basically the guinea pigs for them to take it online. And uh, they had physically printed out which room people are writing in. They lost one of the papers, obviously, without knowing it. So no room would accept me. I've been studying a year and a half. I get there and nobody will let me in. To finally prove to them I have to write, they got my room, everything. At that point, you're so worked up. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have an exam strategy to bring yourself down, I physically, I didn't start immediately. I had to do breathing exercises, just get myself grounded and then start. 
and just put it behind you. So that's very important. I've seen people get flustered in exams. I've walked out of exams and people are lying in the fetal position on the ground during lunch hour. <laughs> like You have to go back in. You need to compose yourself. So these exams are stressful. But to stay on the same point of really managing your stress, this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. And you need to recognize that at the start and you need to manage your stress. It looks different for each person. For some people, I know it's journaling. For me, it was exercise. Just making it a priority as much as like you have to be disciplined. That's a non-negotiable and you have to get in your time. But you also have to understand that if you burn out at month four and you've got two months to go, it's all gone. Mm -hmm. So figure out what helps you get there and be diligent with that. Know yourself, basically. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, I think for me, on the on a, or a study tip that I always used was I knew I could do 10 pages in an hour. That was my, <laughs> my rate. So I knew how if I had 1,400 pages, I think part two, I knew that I had to do that many hours and then the mock exams on top of it. And I worked back. And so, and I think you, you think 10 hours in a week, 30 weeks, you can do 10 hours. But you know, if you, you don't want to work on, you don't want to do it on Friday. Mm. Maybe you don't want to do it on Monday. So you've got those three days. Then you got, you know, now you've got your weekend to think about. So just find that time because 10 doesn't sound like a lot of time. Mm. But when you actually have to fill it in between <laughs> work or a crazy project or family or, you know, mm. like you said, life happens. And yeah. Lots of things. Um, and you're going to have happen. to sacrifice. Yeah. Like that yeah. Wednesday bri with friends. Sorry, yeah. but it doesn't mean you have to give up on everything in life. Like, if you know people send out wedding RSVPs nine <laughs> months ahead, you know that's coming, plan around it. Mm -hmm. But for me, the biggest thing, with everybody speaking about like time that you have to put in and all of that, if you cheat, you're cheating yourself. In six months' time, you're sitting there for the same exam. You're the one losing in that situation. Yeah, I think for me... Again. Um, English is not my first language and the Afrikaans um, students and people might also know is some of the more difficult concepts I need to be able to discuss it with someone then I know that I understand them and I can then articulate myself better because I need to think in Zulu and then how do I say this so it's not that I don't understand it but for the more difficult concepts be able to have a discussion about it and that really really yeah. helps. Yeah, it's almost like a mini project in itself, you know, setting yourself up with your whatever exam strategy, study timetable, your people <laughs> who are, you're going to go to and um, the people who you can rely on for support. And, and I suppose everyone is different. You know, people will gladly do it on their own. Some people will want their people to bounce things off. But mm -hmm. I think it's find a strategy that works for you as an individual and stick to it and be disciplined and make it work. You know, I think that's the, the key things that are coming out of this. Um, we've got a couple of consultants who are joining us uh, here in Monocle HQ. We'll throw it out to maybe see if anyone's got any questions for the panel or for Russell here. Yeah, Theo? I have a question. Quick one. Um, I should have two, maybe three. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Russell, just very, very briefly, um, Bruno mentioned the importance of uh, the mock exams or pre preparation. How does that fit into this boot camp and what you're offering at the moment? Where does the mock exam fit into your strategy? So typically what we do is we do the boot camp first to give the guys that, that full revision of the, of, of the syllabus. And only a couple of days later, we, we, we go into the exams. So again, a candidate that's not prepared for that, okay, to then write to the exam, it's, it's a little benefit to them. In yes. fact, it's, it's probably a bit discouraging for them if you, you know, if you write an exam and you think, and then someone tells you that the pass mark is 70%. So that's, you know. Um, so typically it'll fit in after the boot camp mm. um, and what we what, what we like to do is and what i find equally as beneficial if not more than the exam itself is once the candidate's has written the exam is we have a feedback session you know <clears throat> we, we bring everybody back in after they've written the exam and uh, we go through the exam question by question people say well even the ones we got right yeah those two because <laughs> I'm, I'm a big believer in in chance that sometimes you, just, you might have just got A and you didn't really know it was A, but you picked A and, you, you know, so we go through everything. And, and, and as we go through those sessions, we then give them exam technique. Um, you know, what, what do you do? 
just, just a, a very amusing one. I had a candidate phone me a week before he wrote CFA Level 1, and he says, I can't do economics. I said, well, no one can really. I mean, <laughs> but he, what I do, I said, listen, it's 10% of the syllabus, and um, you've got a week. Okay, exam technique, leave it out. He said, don't study it at all. I said, no, leave it now. You'll get the other nine. I'd rather spend a week that you've got left going over the, the remaining nine topics, getting them really sharp. He said, what do I do for economics? I said, what's your name again? He says, Arno. I said, brilliant. I said, every time you get an economics question, you put an A. <laughs> a for Arno. And he says, no, you're insane. <laughs> so I said, no, no. I said, the strategy is because CFA have got A, B, and C. So if you work out the probabilities, if you put A's for all of them, so you'll get three out of ten. You get three three percent, three maybe four percent. That's how that to make sure that, that people don't game in the exam. So you get three percent by putting A's. And um, he thought he said, okay, I'll take your advice. He found me. I said he passed this exam. I said, yeah. I said, I'm sure you did. He said he couldn't believe it. He said, were you serious? I said, yeah. I said because to spend that last week trying to get economics right, it's just going to like remember says it's just going to unsettle you because you're not going to get it anyway. And at best, what are you going to get? 40%. So you, instead of getting three, you'll get four. You'll get one extra mark, but you've left everything else out. Spend that week refining everything else and put A's. If your name's Benita, you'll put a B. Yes. And if, if you don't have an A, B, or C, you've got to pick the letter. The trick is, of course, not to, not to go A, B, B, A, 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 because that will defile the laws of probability, of course. But So in that session that we have, so we run the boot camp, they do a practice paper, and then we bring them back in again for that strategy session, which often people find is the most valuable because they, we teach them all the tricks there. And is that part of what we're offering in terms of this, this partnership? Correct. Oh, that's awesome. Any other questions? Is this only for Monaco consultants or? So the boot camp, yeah, for anyone who's uh, tuning in the boot camp and obviously the mock exams is for Monaco employees and for people within the financial services industry who are, want to be part of, you know, learning this kind of the way forward in terms of the study, the prep, and wanting to really <coughs> ace the exams, you know, it's going to be funded by Monocle, and so it's a, it's a very cool initiative. As I said before, if you want to learn more, or you want to sign up just to hear more, scan on the QR code, leave your details, and then we'll follow through on the rest. Um, anything that you guys just want to sign off, and uh, last piece of advice before we finish up with this designations uh, webinar, everyone? <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd say, like Irma mentioned, look after your mental health, especially yeah. when you get your exam results, because it's it's crushing um, if you don't pass because you put all that time in, um, and it, it it I don't it often is not a fair reflection on just your ability. There are multiple things that can happen, and at the end of the day, um, a certain amount of people have to pass, and and not everybody is going to get that. So. I think take it as it comes. Um, and like I said, there's always, it, it's twice, three times a year. Um, so you can get it, but definitely look after yourself. Yeah. And to remember, of course, you know, a lot of guys coming out of varsity or that, the pass mark at varsity is anywhere between 47% to 50. They, they don't tell you this, but a lot of, when, when you get 50 at varsity, you didn't get 50. You've got a, Around 50. <laughs> <laughs> when you start these designations, that pass mark range is now between 65 to 70, which is, which is first of all, be prepared for that extra amount of work. And as Guy says, you know, you may fail on 65. There's no, there's no shame in that. You know your work, but you're on a curve. 65 was just below what you needed. 66 would have got you through. So there's, yeah. look after yourself. I think mm -hmm. that's the key because these designations are brutal. Um, take a lot of work, a lot of commitment, but look after yourselves. You know, it's but I guess that's why there is that respect in the industry, it shows yeah. that grit. So, uh, yeah, but it's a marathon, not a sprint. Yeah, and look, it's hard work and dedication, and there's a reason for having the designation and the professional qualification on your CV, you know. And the reason why Monocle is looking to support this and <clears throat> support the financial services industry in creating more designations, whether it be for Monocle employees or people in the financial service industry, you know. Um, and I think that's why it's such a cool initiative. Um, and if you want to put your qualification to good use, and if you do have like we've said, a, a number of qualifications. We're focusing in the boot camps and the mock exams around 
FRM and CFA. Um, but if you have them and you want to kind of put them to more financial service and consulting use of Monocle, apply. Look at the website, the Monocle website, and or get in touch with any one of our panels through LinkedIn um, or the people in culture team at Monocle. Um, so we really appreciate you taking time to join us this evening. Uh, my thanks to the panel, to Karuna, to Phoebe, to Irma, to Guy. Russell, thanks very much for Thank coming you. in. It's been a pleasure chatting to you all. It's been a really fun webinar. Um, I'm sure you'll have many people who'll be connected in on LinkedIn and getting in touch for advice out there like they always do. Um, I'm Patrick Byrne. I'm Senior Executive of People and Culture at Monocle. Thanks very much for joining and have a great evening. All the best. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. I might just sign up for something, you know? Yeah. <laughs>